That's good to know. And then one more follow-up question in regards to, you know, a plant being deficient and a pest being more prone to attack. Now, I've heard uh, talking about bricks. I don't know how familiar you are, you are with bricks levels, but from what is said uh, very often is that if your bricks level is above 12%, you're pretty much invisible to pests. Is that true or is that bro science? That's never been my experience. And the I have actually made several videos about this topic. It's very pernicious. Um, basically, so bricks has to do with not a lot of times people simplify it to sugar content, and a lot of times people are looking for sugar content specifically, uh, the photosynthate, right? And um, I like to say it like this: bricks can't not be useful. It has to be helpful to the plant. Uh, the photosynthate is incredibly important for. Um, the basic powering of its metabolism, right? Um, so that's, it can't not, not be helpful. But uh, um, insects and other things have great ways of feeding on plants and the sugars inside and also the other constituents in the phloem. Bricks levels also change rapidly, especially if we're dealing with uh, most plants that people are dealing with that uh, photosynthesize way. They photosynthesize during the day, and then all that, all those processes kind of shut off during nighttime. Not all plants do this, but a lot of them do. And um, in that case, you're getting bricks levels that are not the same consistently. So for a lot of reasons, bricks doesn't really make sense as a proxy for plant health, uh, but it can be really helpful just to gauge the photosynthetic rate of the plant. Um, and to that matter, aphids and many other insects have tons of enzymes and detoxification genes and things related to um, suppressing plant immune response and suppressing or detoxifying compounds. And aphids are particularly good at this. Uh, in my video about aphid physiology and why aphids can eat healthy plants, I go over with research from an insect physiologist um, that talks about how they were able to get aphids to feed on uh, sugar sources of 34% bricks, uh, which is pretty massive. And um, they were also able to target, sorry, they were able to target the rate at which when they increased the bricks, that how the aphids were able to um, basically uh, degrade the sugars that they were feeding on and um, deal with them totally. So as they moved from one megapascal to four megapascals of pressure, which is actually massive when you think about how small these insects are, the sugars were so concentrated, um, you, could, you could say that four megapascals is about the pressure that a paintball marker makes, you know, when it's propelling a paintball. So pretty, pretty big. And the enzymes in them were able to break down those sugars uh, with no problem, and then they excrete them as honeydew. So, oh, that's another thing we should probably talk about. A great way to find if you have aphids is if you see these the sticky substance on the leaves of your plants. You can look up from those leaves, and you can often find aphids. And sometimes that honeydew is colonized with um, a uh, a fungus uh, called sooty mold. It's not directly pathogenic to the plant, but it does grow on the honeydew and it can make the plants um, not cosmetically viable, for example. This clip is brought to you by AC Infinity. Use discount code MrGrowAt15 to save on any of their products.